Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video showcasing more of the Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag. In the last video we struggled for way too long trying to find an online decoder that could help us determine Morse code. So if you hadn't seen that video, hey, please go do take a look. But now, let's dive into something completely new over here on my computer screen. So let's get after it. I am going to move into this next challenge in the forensics category. It's called Packets Primer. For 100 points, looks like it says we can download the packet capture file and use packet analysis software to find the flag. Ooh, okay, so this is a PCAP file. Let's go ahead and download this. I'll grab the download link and uh, sure, let me clean up what my Sublime Text window had uh, beforehand. And we'll move into our forensics category folder. We can now create a directory for this specific challenge. It's called Packets Primer. Move into that directory and then let's w get this file down. Cool. Okay. So in this current directory, I have this network dump.flag.pcap file, and I'm gonna run the file command on this file so we could see what the heck this thing is. This is a PCAP capture file. Hmm. So if you aren't familiar, a PCAP file is a packet capture. And packets are, hey, the bits of information, the bytes and the data that get sent back and forth between one computer and the next or one other device and how it talks to other machines out on the internet. Like when you make that HTTP request to, hey, to go talk to a web server, maybe retrieve a website, you are sending a packet that will get that. And that's something that really happens all the time, whether you're making those HTTP requests or you're using other protocols like FTP, file transfer protocol, or SSH, secure shell, or DNS, domain name system, SMB, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all that is bundled up and wrapped into what could be saved and captured in a packet capture file. Now you could actually use tools like Wireshark as a great example. And I think obviously I have a ton of whole, whole lot of videos on Wireshark. Uh, there are all incredible great creators that also showcase Wireshark and cool stuff that you can do. If you don't have it installed, you might have to sudo apt install it on your box. Uh, but you could just go ahead and open up Wireshark or pass in like a file as an argument. And then we could actually open what we are presented with here. Uh, we know that that was in the CTF directory that we have made, Pico in the forensics category, packets primer, our network dump file. Now, if I open this up, we have a couple different displays going on here. It actually is broken down sort of vertically, or at least different rows. At the very, very top, you have a listing of all of the packets that you might find in this collection, in this packet capture file. In the middle here, you can see me moving this one up and down. It sort of shows you like, okay, based on each layer of information that might be present within this packet, what is all of that carved out for you? Like, oh, this went from one IP address to another IP address or different computers. What protocol was this from? What is the source MAC address or the physical hardware identifier for that sort of device? What's the length info? What are flags are set for different and pieces of something that might be necessary for the protocol that was sent. TCP, a transmission control protocol. Um, you've got the SYN, SYN ACK, ACK handshake. Maybe some folks are familiar with that. Or again, tons of great videos. Uh, Chris Greer puts out some incredible stuff on that if you'd like to get more into it. A UDP as user datagram protocol, different thing for different kinds of traffic data. Um, anyway, Wireshark will show you all of this and you can dig into it. At the very, very bottom, this other layer here, that will show you like, oh, a hexadecimal breakdown and even some ASCII representations on that right-hand side uh, that tell you what are the real contents of this packet. How is it represented as its own data bytes, binary hexadecimal, the stuff that's bundled into that packet itself. So right now we're just looking at the very, very top packet Looks like it sent a SYN request or, or a, it sent a TCP packet with the SYN flag set, which is basically a client or something trying to call up its friend and say, hey, are you there? And then the other individual, I guess here, let's keep track of the, the source and destination here. 10.0.2.15, call that computer A, right? It's trying to talk to computer B, 10.0.2.4. It's calling it up and say like, yo, computer B, are you there? And computer B responds as the next part of the conversation. They pick up their phone and they say, yo, what's up? 
How's it going, Computer A? I am here. And now Computer A, hearing this message, while it got a sin ack, it will now send an ack back. It will acknowledge, hey, what's up, Computer B? I hear you loud and clear. I understand that you are present. I understand that you're on the phone and you're willing to talk. That's how you have, hey, a handshake, a literal handshake that says, yes, everyone is in the participants and we are all ready to now begin conversations. And then we send a push or PSH. I, I might be getting that wrong, uh, but with some data present. And you might be able to see it down here. Ooh, that actually showcases some strings or some printable data. Uh, if you really wanted to dive into it, we could try and copy and paste data out of this thing, but I, I can't really click and drag all that easily. So knowing that this is the packet that we're super duper interested in, we could right click on that packet and then do something called follow. And that, okay, for every communication thing that was sent within this conversation, right, on this phone call between computer A and computer B, I wanna see that. I wanna see that TCP stream. And I wanna know what was said. So if I click on that TCP stream, that will pop open a new window and I can actually see, ooh, this is all the data that was pr sent and present here. Uh, I'll try and zoom in, if it will let me. I don't know. <laughs> but we can see Pico CTF is all present here. There is our flag, packet shark with a hexadecimal value there at the end. Nice. Now notice at the very, very top of Wireshark, before we move on and submit this flag, uh, this input box changed. It used to be empty. It used to be where we could enter anything that we wanted to, but we could enter a Wireshark filter. Or I think it's like the, the Berkeley packet filter protocol language schema thing. Uh, and that you could enter the specific syntax to filter out things based off of fields and flags that might be set and present across multiple packets. And that way only those things are displayed. Like when we did that, right, all those ARP protocol packets, you didn't see them because they were filtered out. We filtered on to only see, hey, the things present in that TCP stream conversation. And that's why you saw, hey, this now input box is filled out with a green background. But if I clear that out, and if I hit enter, I've removed that display filter. And now we can see the ARP requests present again. So anyway, we have a Pico CTF flag here, but you might notice that there are spaces in between each of these letters. So what we could do is again, kind of, hey, use our find and replace functionality in Sublime Text. Uh, we could find space characters and let's replace them with nothing. So they all just go away, right? Control, Alt, and Enter to make that change across all occurrences. And now I've copied this and I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, play with this in our terminal for just a moment. Because ultimately what you saw, what we just found was plain text data present in the packet capture, present in the file. So a quick and dirty way, dirty might not be the right word, but a, a good speed run way to be able to find that is using tools that we already knew, tools that you might've seen in previous videos when we were doing other forensics category challenges, we would use strings to be able to carve out plain text strings present in a file, right? So even if it's like, oh, sure, I see this in the packet transfer within Wireshark, one utility and one tool to be able to show us all these packets. What if we just wanted to speed run and see what plain text is present in there? This is actually super duper handy when you're doing stuff with like regular bare bones HTTP, flat, hey, not secured hypertext transfer protocol method. When you post anything, when you send data like a login, username and password, if that's not encrypted with HTTPS, it's gonna be in plain text. The HTTP methods and headers and stuff that you send back and forth, it's plain text. You could just view that with strings and readily carve out passwords or interesting information or headers that might be present uh, back and forth between the web server and the client connecting to the website. Anyway, we know we're running strings, right? So let's run strings on our network dump flag PCAP file. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, there's some nonsense in there from things that aren't readily uh, actual 
like, printable characters. Those might just be bytes that come from the strange packet formations. We obviously see Pico CTF is in there. Um, now, interestingly enough, it's not going to be something we could easily grip out, I, I guess, because it, well, I guess we very well could, right? We could just say, hey, I want to look for the line that can includes those spaces there. And then we could use the previous tricks that we learned to delete stuff like spaces within the command line, piping it into the TR, the transform command. And now we have that flag displayed out nice and easy for us. So just like that, using strings without even opening Wireshark, we've carved out our flag. And we can save that as a solution. Now we've got that flag.txt file saved. We've got our get flag script that we could repeatedly run anytime and retrieve the flag. Good stuff. Now we can finish that challenge, call it done, and go ahead and submit this for another 100 points. That is basically a super quick cursory overview and showcase of Wireshark and how you could use that to dig into network traffic. And that, hey, yeah, we have computers communicating to each other. Computer A calling up computer B. They're both having a conversation. What is all in that phone call conversation, right? What is the data that's being sent back and forth? Wireshark can help you determine that. And we might be able to do some other magic tricks when we know and understand, okay, the protocols that are used in there could very well be plain text. Or if they're encrypted, we might have to do some other magic tricks to be able to decrypt it and uncover cool stuff. But that's for a later video. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. If you did, if you feel like you learned something new or you just got exposed to new tools or anything, please, please, please do those YouTube algorithm things. Like the video, comment, subscribe. It super duper helps the channel grow and helps get these videos in front of more people who might be super interested in cybersecurity, who might really want to get into this stuff, are fascinated by Capture the Flag. Pico CTF is a great way to get your feet wet and get started. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. I love you. <laughs> Take care.